Welcome again to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. In the last lecture, we talked about stochastic signals and how to model them. With that, we can now extend the sinusoidal and harmonic models that we uh, talked about before into the concept of sinusoidal or harmonic plus residual or stochastic uh, modeling. Uh, we will decompose sounds into uh, these two parts, the sinusoidal or harmonic one and the residual or ideally a stochastic component if this residual is uh, a stochastic signal. So in this uh, lecture we will be combining all the models we have been uh, talking about uh, until now. We'll put together uh, the sinusoidal or harmonic modeling with uh, the idea of a residual component. For that, we'll need to talk about the subtraction of, uh, of the, the sinusoids or the harmonics in order to obtain the residual. And uh, we will talk about a system that puts this together into the harmonic plus residual uh, system. Then we will introduce uh, the stochastic model and we'll put together the sinusoidal and or harmonic uh, models with the stochastic ones for the residual. So in order to do that, we will need to uh, talk about how to model uh, the residual uh, as a stochastic uh, component. And uh, finally, we will uh, make a, an example of this uh, system that combines the harmonic plus the stochastic analysis into an analysis uh, synthesis system. The sinusoidal plus residual model is an extension of the sinusoidal model. We assume that a sinusoidal model is not able to represent the whole sound and uh, that there is a residual component that is perceptually relevant. So it's a, it's a sound that needs to be kept. So in here we see in this equation the, that why the, the signal is, uh, is modeled with this uh, sum of sinusoids, time varying um, sinusoids with amplitude and frequency and uh, we have XR, which is our residual. So the whole sound is uh, YS, our uh, sinusoidal component, and XR, our residual signal. And XR is simply uh, computed by subtracting the sinusoids from the original signal. And this is uh, what we'll be talking about in, uh, in this uh, lecture. OK, uh, but it's much uh, better, uh, at least from our point of view, to uh, show this model from the spectral uh, point of view, uh, because that's where we're going to be uh, developing all these models uh, from. Okay, so here we see the sum of the sinusoids as the sum of the transform of the windows uh, shifted uh, to a frequency and scale to the amplitudes of these uh, sinusoids, plus the spectrum of this residual component. And the spectrum of this residual component, and uh, now this is how we're going to do it, is obtained by subtracting the spectrum of the sinusoids from the spectrum of the original signal. Okay, So let's show an example exactly how this uh, uh, will work. Um, this is uh, one frame of a sound, and here we can show the different steps involved in this uh, uh, harmonic plus residual uh, analysis. On the left uh, top, we see our frame, windowed uh, frame of a flute sound. Okay, so it's just a few periods of a flute sound. And then below that, we see the harmonic analysis that uh, we do from the spectrum. So we do the the spectral analysis, the peaks, and we select the peaks with these uh, blue crosses that are really the harmonics of uh, that particular sound. And below it, we see the actual phase uh, of the spectrum with the crosses at the phase of these harmonics. Okay, and then what we do is we have to synthesize these uh, harmonics. <coughs> And this is what we see on the right side with the light uh, red and light uh, cyan colors. So the light red is the synthesized harmonics of, uh, of the sound of that particular frame. Of course, this is a different uh, FFT size. Uh, the, the shapes of, the, of these lobes is different because the window is different. This is a Blackman-Harris window using the synthesis. So this is the synthesized 
spectrum and then we have to subtract this spectrum from the original spectrum strictly speaking we don't subtract it from the spectrum on the left we subtract it from another generated spectrum that has the same parameters so that we can uh, subtract the two uh, of the, the same size and the same window size and then if we subtract these uh, uh, synthesized sinusoids or harmonics from the original one we get this dark uh, red and dark uh, cyan color okay and this is the residual uh, spectrum in uh, magnitude and phase uh, representation and if we take the inverse of that we see uh, the, the residual signal in the time domain and that's what we see on the top right uh, plot in which we see the original uh, flute uh, sound uh, of course with the, the right windowing and the right size that we uh, have in the synthesis and we see the residual uh, signal this uh, dark uh, blue one and again this is not just uh, an error signal this uh, in fact is a relevant um, component is a relevant uh, part of the sound that we want to uh, recover so the whole system uh, if we put together uh, all this analysis in a frame by frame type of thing and, and, and put it together into a whole analysis uh, synthesis system we get uh, this uh, block diagram in which we start from the signal x of n then uh, we window it we compute the FFT, obtaining the magnitude and phase spectrum, we detect the peaks. Out of those peaks, we find the fundamental uh, frequency. And uh, once we have this fundamental frequency, we can identify the harmonics of that sound. And we can synthesize the, those uh, harmonics with the Blank and Harris window. Okay, so we have another spectrum, YH that can be subtracted from the original signal but in order to do that we need to recompute another spectrum of the original signal with a window and a, a size that is com comparable with uh, the size that we use in the synthesis so we will choose a window size that normally will be 512 samples we'll use a blackman harris window so that the shape of this uh, uh, x uh, of k uh, that we now compute uh, can be easily subtracted from yh so that's it's just a complex subtraction and we get x uh, capital x uh, r which is our residual spectrum okay and then this uh, residual spectrum can be added to the uh, harmonic spectrum and then we can compute the inverse FFT and do the overlap at uh, iterating over the whole sound. We can see an example of the analysis of a particular sound using the harmonic plus residual model. So here we took uh, the flute sound that we have heard uh, before and so on top we see the spectrogram of this flute sound and superposed we see the harmonics that have uh, been obtained. So let's listen to this harmonic uh, synthesis okay and then these harmonics are subtracted from this uh, background spectrogram and we obtain these uh, lower um, uh, sort of uh, plots which are the spectrogram of the residual component so let's just now listen to this uh, residual that uh, has been obtained Okay, it's soft, but it's clearly very relevant. It's basically the breath uh, noise of the instrument, which is an important part of the characteristics uh, of, uh, of this sound. But uh, this uh, residual component is, is a complete sound. Uh, therefore, it's, it's difficult to process. Uh, we need to model it. So we need to be able to approximate it uh, with uh, a particular uh, modeling approach. And, and of course we will need to, to model it with the stochastic model. Um, so let's introduce the stochastic approximation of this residual component and uh, let's present uh, this uh, idea of the sinusoidal plus stochastic uh, model. So very similar to what we saw before. Uh, so we have uh, the, the signal to be uh, the sum of, uh, sum of sinusoids plus the, the stochastic signal 
now this stochastic uh, signal or stochastic component is not just the subtraction of uh, the, the sinusoids minus the original signal, but is actually the result of a modeling approach. So below here we see the equation of the modeling of this stochastic component. The stochastic component is the result of filtering white noise with the impulse response of the approximation of this uh, residual signal. So we have the impulse response of every frame of uh, this uh, residual uh, signal and we obtain this impulse response that approximates the spectral shape of that. So in fact it's uh, much uh, better uh, to uh, visualize this model in the, the frequency domain and so here uh, we see on the top the equation uh, of the sum of the sinusoids, the sum of the, of the analysis windows plus the spectrum of the stochastic component and now this stochastic component is uh, this idea of uh, filtered white noise but in the frequency domain is the product of the approximation of the uh, absolute value of the residual signal multiply by e to the j and the phase of the random uh, the white noise uh, set of random numbers okay so the magnitude spectrum is the approximation of the residual and the phase spectrum is uh, the white noise basically the phase spectrum of the white noise this is the concept of the stochastic approximation that uh, we saw in the previous lecture okay so with these we can actually see how uh, in a single uh, spectrum we actually perform this uh, stochastic approximation of the residual so we start from on the top with the magnitude spectrum of a signal the harmonics uh, and then below the light uh, um, red is the synthesized uh, spectrum the myh and then uh, this uh, is uh, subtracted from the original spectrum again uh, it's a spectrum that will have to be recomputed and then we obtain uh, the the next uh, curve which is the mxr which is the residual spectrum okay and this residual spe spectrum can be approximated with a, a smooth a smooth curve which is the uh, myst which is this uh, sort of uh, line uh, approximation of uh, this residual and this is going to be our uh, stochastic model so we can put it together uh, into an analysis uh, synthesis system and it's very similar to what we saw before so we start from the signal uh, we compute the FFT we find the peaks we find uh, harmonics we synthesize them in the frequency domain and we subtract them from another uh, spectrum of uh, the original signal recomputed to be able to subtract it and then what is new uh, in this uh, in this model is the stochastic approximation of the residual so we take this uh, residual spectrum we uh, run it through the stochastic approximation approximation uh, module and then uh, we can synthesize and we can synthesize the stochastic component by basically the idea is filtering white noise but in in the implementation is basically taking the faces of uh, random numbers and um, applying the the stochastic uh, approximation uh, magnitude spectrum and this results into a spectrum that then can be summed to uh, the spectrum of the harmonics and perform exactly the same thing that we have uh, done before so perform the inverse FFT and the overlap at so let's uh, now see an example of uh, a complete uh, analysis synthesis of a particular sound so we are taking this uh, uh, saxophone uh, sound uh, let's uh, listen to that Okay, and then uh, below it we have the two representations that we have obtained, the harmonics and the stochastic component, the spectrogram of the stochastic component. Let's listen to the harmonics. 
Well, we may not appreciate uh, what is missing, but when we listen to the stochastic approximation, we have to make it a little bit louder in order to actually uh, listen uh, what is going on. Well, with these two components, we basically uh, have uh, analyzed uh, and, and modeled the original signal, and we can put them together and generate the synthesized sound that captures uh, most of what is perceptually relevant in uh, this sound. So for these uh, topics that uh, I, I discuss in this uh, lecture, uh, there's not that many references in terms of uh, tutorials or, or uh, sort of more introductory material, but there is quite a bit of articles uh, that have been proposing uh, different uh, strategies to uh, analyze sinusoids, obtain residuals, approximating the residuals, etc. Uh, so in this, uh, in this link that I put uh, here on this, uh, the website of, uh, of the MTG, I have kept uh, some uh, articles, well, quite a bit of articles, that uh, have been published related uh, to uh, these issues. So feel free to go there and uh, you can uh, you can uh, sort of uh, find uh, those articles. And, uh, and that's all basically. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we have covered uh, the most advanced uh, models that we will be presenting in this course. Uh, we basically combine all the previous models, uh, developing a variety of analysis and synthesis techniques that can be applied to many sounds and for uh, many applications. In the next lecture, uh, we'll focus on uh, how these models uh, can be used to transform sounds. So I think uh, we're going to uh, start having fun and, uh, and doing some interesting uh, new sounds. So I hope to see you then. Bye-bye.